Hello, I'm recording myself uh, applying uh, mesh analysis or Kirchhoff's uh, second law for uh, solving a question. Uh, this question is example 5, uh, page uh, 50 and 51 of our reference book. So I'm going to draw the circuit again. So what do we have here is a voltage supply and then we have resistor R and then we have a junction here we have inductor and then we have a capacitor we are back together and then here we go so this is our input voltage V and I'm calling that R L C and the voltage across the capacitor C I'm calling it VC and that is our output. So uh, the possible uh, quiz question would be drive the relationship between the VC, the output uh, potential difference across the capacitor and the input voltage V. Now for, uh, for the mesh analysis, we assume that current I1 is flowing um, inside this loop and then I2 is flowing um, inside the second loop that we have on the right side. These labels I1 and I2 uh, they are different from our previous uh, analysis so don't be confused with the names here it was nodal analysis so the current uh, the labels the names that we use they stay here for these nodal analysis they are different here so what uh, we know from uh, mesh analysis is that um, the algebraic sum of uh, whatever is happening inside one loop should be zero and uh, when we are looking at our uh, left side so what we see here is that we have our input voltage V. One way is that we put everything that is consumed in this loop equal to V. Uh, another way that we can do is uh, we can start from this point and we look at the negative side of our voltage supply and then we put zero is equal to minus V plus uh, VR plus VL. Uh, but I like it to put the V on the left side from the beginning and I know that everything on the right side will be positive because they are going to consume whatever I'm going to give them but for the second loop I do it um, by uh, algebraic uh, way that so I'm going to put everything equal to zero so the input voltage V is equal to the voltage that is being um, across the resistor VR and then another one is my voltage across the inductor. I'm going to call that VL for now. But you know that because they are parallel, so VL is going to be equal to VC. So uh, that is our output. So I put somewhere here that VL is equal to VC. Just in now, um, it's easy to replace VR. We know that VR is um, equal to the current I multiplied in the system. And the I that is flowing here is I1, so that's it. So I have I1 multiplied in R. Now, um, let's write that here. So that will look like this. Let's look at the VA. What do we know about the uh, voltage across inductor? So, uh, if I want to write the relationship between the current for the inductor and the voltage, so the voltage is equal to the inductance constant N multiplied in derivative of the current that is flowing inside the inductor. Right now, if I call that IL, Let's call the current that is 
flowing through the inductor L, I, L. So I, L, right now, based on this mesh analysis, is result of subtraction of I1 and I2. And I1 is flowing um, same direction as I, L. So it will be I1 minus I2. And VL, the voltage across inductor is equal to L, the constant L, derivative of IL over time. Now, if I replace the IL with this guy here, mm -hmm. okay, I will have VL is equal to L derivative of I1 minus I2 over time. Okay, we can put that there or we just uh, hold on and we look at the second mesh and uh, we take it from there. Now, let's do the uh, Kirchhoff flow for the second loop or we do, we run a mesh for the second loop. This was the first loop. First mesh. Now, second mesh. So we are looking at this. I'm going to do algebraic. So I'm going to put everything equal to zero. And uh, now, uh, what do we have here? We have the, if I start from this point, I'm looking at voltage across the capacitor first. So I'm going to put VC. I stick to the way that uh, book is written. So when you're looking at that, uh, you feel like, you know, uh, consistent. But you can also start from this point. Now, uh, we see we have that one and then we should write um, voltage across the inductor. So that will be the VL. I'm going to call this VL VL prime because mm, that might be different from that one in terms of the uh, sign. Now, the reason that I'm doing it is because the current has different uh, different sign. Now, let's look at that. If I want to write VL, VL prime, VL prime for, um, for the inductor from second mesh point of view, so that would be L derivative of I, L, but this time I'm going to put this prime. This prime doesn't mean differentiate, means that it's a different variable. Now, that I L prime is different from uh, the one that we had here. The reason is because we are looking at this direction, and uh, from this point of view, that I L prime is a result of I two minus I one. I'm going to substitute that there. So I will have VL prime is equal to L derivative of I2 minus I1. You know that that um, subtraction can come up. Just keep that in mind. Okay, so we have um, VL prime here that can go up there. So our VC is equal to minus VL prime. I took one of them to the other side. Now, um, what, I, what I'm going to do uh, now is I'm going to just replace the VL prime and I'm going to use this one here. Now, I will have Vc is equal to minus L derivative of 
I2 minus I1 over time. If I want to compare this with this one here, they, they are equal. And we knew that from before because VL is equal to VC. So that minus sign can affect the minus sign inside and that is exactly equal to that. So we have that confirmation here. Just take a second to think about that. Now let's see uh, what happens if we apply integration to both sides. And then we will have integration of Vc equal to, kind of stick to one of those forms. Let's just, let's just stick to the positive one uh, because it's easy to sort it. Now, um, if we want to apply uh, integration for for uh, for the right side, so the integration has effect, and then we will have. I2 minus I1 and the constant L is here. Now, um, we can use this for substituting uh, into the equations. Before we move, uh, we can look at the I2. I2 is the current for the second mesh here. We also know that this current is the only current that is flowing through the capacitor. So we can write small equation that describes the voltage for that capacitor and the current flowing through that capacitor. So I2 is equal to constant C attributing of voltage C T. Now uh, we can replace that inside and we want to get I1 and then by having the I1 we can replace the I1 in our first mesh equation that way we replace the VL with VC and then uh, that out the uh, final relationship is uh, right. Now uh, let's replace I2 here. Integration of Vc stays on the left side. And on the right side, I am going to have... I separate them. So I will have my... L is here and then I have one C here and I2 is derivative of voltage C over time and then that subtraction and that minus sign uh, they cancel each other and then we have then the L comes there so uh, what I will have here is I1. So I just replaced the I2 with what I knew from the relationship uh, for capacitor. Now, I want to get the I1 uh, on one side and everything else to the other side. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, clean it up and divide both sides with L. So I keep my I1 on the left side. 
so what I'm going to do is I put this one to the other side so uh, that minus sign will be gone and I divide everything with L so it will be this L and that L will cancel each other so I will have C derivative of EZ over time and then I will have the integration the integration of DC DT I'm just double checking with the book so when I'm dividing everything with L I have one L here now this will be the I1 which I'm going to replace into my uh, first mesh here so I'm going to replace that or substitute that in with equal to I1R plus VC So I have V is equal to I one R and note that I replaced the VL with VC because they are equal to each other. So VC. Now I'm going to uh, substitute I1. So I will have I is equal to R will be uh, multiplied in all of those. So it will be R C derivative of voltage C in time. And then I have another one that will have R multiplied. So I will have R over L and integration of voltage C over time and I have uh, my VC staying that is exact same equation that we got uh, when we did it with nodal analysis I'm just comparing it this is the nodal analysis and we can see that we have exact same thing so here on the left side again I have my input and on the right side I have um, an order of my derivative of output. Second part is integration, variation of my output and the output itself. I'm happy with that and uh, this completes uh, the section for uh, electrical circuits. So uh, next class we start to look at how actually electrical and mechanical systems are similar and uh, forgive me if my pronunciation is not um, correct but we call it electrical and mechanical analogies. So that will start from page 51 of our reference book and um, it's going to be very interesting because we are going to see how, um, for example, dashboard uh, acts similar as some electrical component or how mass can be represented as some electrical component. And that way, the mathematical analysis becomes a little bit easier than looking at mechanical systems uh, on their own. So thank you, check uh, rest of recordings and uh, I see you guys in the class.